Right, well, it's been a really fascinating uh, time this Black History Month. Uh, so much more has been done this year, even after last year. But certainly Black Lives Matter has raised the profile of black history and the need for people to understand their heritage more. So thank you to our speakers today, Marcia and David. And um, just to say that uh, we're going to collect examples of black history walks in the UK um, for an information pack, which you'll we'll put on our new website when we get that sorted out. So thank you to David and thank you to Marcia, Black Heritage Walks Network. This is the guy from Liverpool I was speaking about, Lawrence Westgraff, Westgraff and he does fascinating tours. Um, uh, they get booked up quite quickly. Um, Liverpool has quite a number of tourists going. Um, and the, the recognition of uh, Liverpool as in Liverpool of its history, I think is exceptional. Um, and they talk about the history, but having the International Slavery Museum there and um, walks around the docks, I've been on a, um, a black history walk thinking about it, um, to find out about how they built the docks there and, and the history. Um, and, and people are genuinely interested in knowing. And uh, Liverpool has a different history because it had a lot of um, black sailors years and years back, certainly before um, the Second World War. Um, and so their communities are quite, quite different to perhaps some other to towns and cities in the UK. So I haven't approached Lawrence Westgaff yet, but he might come and give us a virtual uh, black history tour of Liverpool. But also to say that in, uh, in Glasgow, I noticed there's going to be a walking tour on, uh, on Saturday, tomorrow. Um, and uh, this is what he has to say about his walk and talk to highlight a more difficult uh, context of Glasgow's George Square. So I'm going to post this PowerPoint out quite quickly and I'll certainly put well I'll certainly post it onto the website so that you can check it if you want to um, and on Sunday afternoon this is another tour in Glasgow led by Jasmine Yasmin and Nelson and so that's going on and they've been doing Black History Month tours since 2012 so you know interesting to find out what different people are doing this is the one that David told us about. So you'll have the link to David's site. Now, some of the online sessions of which there have been many, again, back to Glasgow, because I was on their website. One of the things is that I've not been able to, to um, alert people in advance, but what I'm going to do is find out where the recordings are and log the recordings. Now, it's been a special week this week about the Benin Bronzes. Um, and one of the universities, um, I think it's Cambridge, isn't it, that um, Oxford that's returned a bid in bronze with great ceremony this week. Um, but um, there's a, a, we'll be able to see what the, the session was about. Now, London Metropolitan University have got a great range of talks and um, going right through the year every month. So it'll be interesting to see what they're doing and people can follow up things that interest them there. This again, something to uh, look forward to. This is a live audio drama, another way of telling stories. A stranger in a strange place. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. The screenwriter is Mel Pennant um, and uh, that's in November. Um, I've not been able to find the link for this, but oops, a daisy, it's... Um, uh, being put on by the Jamaican Gleaner, and the question is, is Black History Month still relevant? Now, in uh, the US, Black History Month has been very important since its inception in the 1920s, I think. Um, but Black History for every country, or African history for every country, or whatever it is, country history, is important to localise it. And because Black History Month in America has had such an influence on British Black history and has a big influence on Jamaican Black history, I think they really want to, to talk about how, how to um, word um, 
a month, maybe Emancipation Month or something. I've got different ideas. So I put a link to an article in the Jamaican Gleaner if anybody's interested in that. Um, but that sounds fascinating. Okay, here's another one, Woven Together, Dundee's Multicultural History Project. And that's interesting, uh, Marcia, from what you were saying, that you mm. don't just look at Black history, Caribbean history, African history. Um, you're looking at the, the, the wider community in that context. And so it'll be interesting to see what they, uh, they have done there. But as I say, we'll be able to see the recordings of all these things if people post them. Right, the um, University of Liverpool and the Centre for the Study of International Slavery and the International Slavery Museum have all been working together. And so there's um, a project about um, black academia that's going on at the moment. So I, I listened to that, that was really interesting. Uh, Dr. Richard Benjamin is the director of the International Museum for Slavery. And that was a fascinating talk that he gave, reconnecting and reframing through the lens of an activist museum and also Jean-Francois Manicom, who's the lead curator of the um, Transatlantic Slave Gallery at the International Slavery Museum. Um, I, I didn't get to hear his presentation, but that sounds absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, here again, this is uh, another one in Glasgow. Um, I've, I don't know if it's just the pages I've been looking at, but I found a lot about Glasgow. Um, activities and this uh, one I don't quite understand but it sounds very interesting so um, another one to look at this was going back to the uh, uh, to Liverpool Professor Sir Hilary Beckles spoke from Jamaica um, to um, the Centre for the Study of International Slavery and he was discussing the barriers to uh, representation for black academics so Professor Sir Hilary Beckles is uh, Pro Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies. And he wrote the book, Britain's Black Debt um, in 2015. Sorry, Liz, he's actually the Vice-Chancellor. Vice-Chancellor, I'm sorry, Vice-Chancellor, no get my terminologies right. So Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, Vice-Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, um, actually came to Britain to speak at a conference in Birmingham that we ran, um, which um, our colleague Yasser Safari was involved in when we were uh, working with the um, University of Birmingham on a project about the roots and development of Rastafari in the West Midlands. And um, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles came and made a presentation prior to him launching this book. And I have to say that that presentation was perhaps the thing that, 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 that ever shocked me the most because this was before the UCL database and all that, that, that information came out. So he's a fantastic speaker. One day I'll have the confidence to approach him to ask him to speak to, speak to us, but we'll, uh, he, he's, he's busy doing all kinds of, of other things at the moment, including um, working with the... Um, the Danish um, government and did a very interesting presentation about that. So this was the one that I've just um, mentioned earlier. Now, future speakers and themes to explore. Okay, here you are starring on this slide, Dr. Bernard Janke, along with your colleague Vivian Crawford. I don't know if he'll be able to join us as well, but. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, this is coming soon and uh, there's a YouTube link there. I can't just remember what it was, just introducing the um, Institute of Jamaica, I think. And this will be about uh, Jamaican language and culture. So you can log into that. And this, this is just exceptional. Um, I don't know, uh, Marcia, if you know of this book, Three Continents, One History. It was the book that was produced out of research yeah. efforts um, by Clive Harris and his mm -hmm. team in 2007. Okay. Do you know uh, it, Marcia? Yes. Have you got uh, a copy of it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Signed by Clive Harris himself. 
right fantastic yeah. well i confessed to colleagues a few weeks ago that this coffee table book was so expensive when it came out that even i didn't buy it oh but it is now online and free and yeah. you can read it yeah. online the whole book mm. it's absolutely fantastic the work that clive harris and his, his colleagues did is just remarkable and it tells a very importantly big story mm. about the three continents of europe africa and the americas um just amazing so that's that's my that's my find of the week my gift of the week really and great resources to help understanding black and african history all right what have we got here yes don't forget the unesco series there's um more than 18 episodes and this one's particularly interesting the diamonds gold and greed history of africa um and this is african history told by um from an african perspective with um with the presenter so um that's uh that's good. I, st I haven't watched all 18 episodes, I have to say, but get there. That's just a little bit more information about that. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I promote anything that's done by David Olasuga. Well, he's done a foreword into the interesting narrative of the life of Lando Equiano. So that's an interesting uh, um, new publication and useful publication, republication. Right, okay, I think we're there. Oh, what else is going on? Well, in Wales, the uh, busiest could be with the um, uh, report on racial inequality in Wales and submitting um, uh, ideas for um, teaching um, uh, black history in the curriculum and doing a number of other things. They're really very, very active at the moment. So that was just to bring you up a little to date a little bit with the, a whole range of things that are going on and we've got Helen here from uh, from North Wales and Audrey where are you based? I'm based in North Yorkshire. All right okay that's lovely I'd forgotten. All right well I, I think at that moment we'll stop the recording and then we can just catch up with any other questions that we've got. Thanks then. <laughs>